So I always limit these tutorial videos to 15 minutes so that you can jump around, find what you need. We started your storyboard in the middle of the last video and it gets kind of confusing. This is all set up correctly, but I want to walk it, walk it through from the beginning. So I'm going to go back in my history to where I started this, which was where I, I made frames from layers. So that's a good step for, for all of you. But some of you won't need it, right? So that's under timeline. If you have your animation outputted, this is your GIF animation. This is what you saved your GIF and then you posted that. You are going to click on the hamburger and you're going to say flatten frames into layers. What you then get in your layer window is a whole new stack of frames. And then you can erase all the layers underneath. Once you've done that, your timeline and your layers will match exactly. If they didn't before, now they will. Right? So if you did any animation on the timeline, now that's reflected in your layers as well. All as 100% opaque individual layers that fill the frame. Now this is when you're going to save as and change the name of your file to refined storyboard. I'll go ahead and make mine capitalized. That is incredibly important because this is the file you'll need to find if you want to print evidence of your animation skills for your portfolio, which you might want to do for the midterm, might want to do for your own personal reasons later. So I'm going to save that as a PSD file. It's the refined storyboard. Now I can select all the images, all the frames in the timeline, drag them to the trash. And then I can turn off the timeline. Now I want to check my image size. And I'm, if it's not already there, I want to force it to be 8 inches by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. Some of you animated at higher resolutions. Some of you are animating things that are widescreen. So you just want to really always understand what your re pixel resolution is. Because now we're going to do the layout phase where we put things on the page in a certain place. The best tools we have for layout are the rulers in Photoshop. And so if your rulers do not show inches, you need to go to Photoshop preferences and units in rulers. And you want to change it from being pixels, which is what the default is in Photoshop, to inches. Because when we lay things out, we lay them out for printing. And our physical printing formats are in inches. 8 by 10 is the smallest, you know, arts, fine arts format that we use. So we need to know that it's 8 by 10. All right. So we have it now, the rulers are in inches. I can now use my move tool and I can click on the ruler, either the horizontal or the vertical. I'll start with the horizontal. And it should snap to the edges of my file. And if there are any rulers I want to get rid of, I can just drag them back. Or any guides I want to get rid of, them, I can just drag them back to the ruler. And if I ever want to create a new guide, I just click on the ruler and drag them out. But I want to make sure these rulers snap to the edge of my file. How do you get them to snap? They should snap as a default. If they don't, it's under view options, which is also how you can show your guides and eventually show our grid. And you'll see snap. You can turn snap on and off. And you can also set what, if snap is turned on, what it snaps to. So. The only time snap is not helpful is when you have a guide showing and you're using the lasso tool and you don't want your lasso to accidentally follow the guide. But then you can just turn off your guides. So I just leave snap on all the time. And if I have my guides there, if I, they're viewable, if they're showing, then it will snap. It will not snap to anything that's not showing, right? So even though we have it set to snap to grid, 
unless I'm showing the grid, it won't snap to it. Okay, now that I have that, those perimeters defined, eight by eight inches, 100 pixels per inch. All right, now I have my stack of my flipbook. Think of them as cards, you know, with my images on them. You might have nine of them. That's the minimum. You might have 15, you might have 50, right? But your whole stack is there. It's centered, it's eight by eight inches. Now we need a surface to spread these out, lay these cards out. And the layout tools, now that we have the rulers, Photoshop is only good at doing one thing exactly right in terms of layout. Even though you can snap to rulers and guides, those aren't as exact as in other programs like InDesign. So for two-dimensional layout, the only thing Photoshop does well is grow from the center. It will grow things perfectly from the center. So what we do is we grow the canvas size from the center here. So we go to Image Canvas Size. And if you have an eight by eight inch animation, you wanna make that canvas size 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall, which is the largest physical dimension we'll ever work with in the class because that's the largest any professional ever works on. That's the largest that a standard printing press can accommodate. So it's just good to know that. Eight by 10 is not the smallest professional fine art format, but it's the smallest, most common professional fine art format. There are also four by fives, five by sevens, you know, but eight by 10 is the smallest we ever want to print in this class. So now we've got that 30 by 40 inches. Why 30 by 40 inches? I thought we wanted it to print eight by 10. That's because we're at 100 pixels per inch. 30 by 40 inches at, at 100 pixels per inch is equivalent to around nine by 12 inches at 300 pixels per inch, which is print resolution. So this sets us up to have a, a good quality print at eight by 10 inches. The checkerboard is always distracting to me. This is an optional step, but it helps not hurt your eyes. So create a new layer near the bottom and then fill it with white by going to edit fill white at 100%. Then drag that layer down to the very bottom or you can always use command left bracket to move it down to the bottom. So now we have our table with a tablecloth on it and we have our guides. We need to create our gutters, our space between our different storyboard panels and we want those to be incredibly even so now we're going to turn on our grid so we can go to the view and show grid this also teaches you the shortcuts it's command semicolon to turn on and off your guides it's command apostrophe to turn on and off your grid because the grid is annoying and tough to look at but it's very helpful for this phase it's under view and show and it's just command apostrophe, we'll toggle it on and off. So while I have it on, now it will snap to the grid. And I wanna make new guides that snap one inch from each edge of my animation frames, my stack of cards. And then I can immediately, once it's snapped to the grid, I can turn it off with command apostrophe. And that gives me the places to put, lay out all nine frames. Let's start at the very top of my flipbook. I can just move that frame in or the very bottom of my flipbook. It depends whether you had to reverse frames or not. And I can start with this frame. Sometimes it's helpful to, to find your, your final frame. And I think my final frame is gonna be this one because telling a transformation story is different when you don't have movement as a tool, right? Instead, you have sequential panels. So I'm telling the story of this to this with a creature that gets introduced throughout. So then I can jump around and maybe that's my third frame. And maybe this is my second frame. It's nice to have the move tool and auto select layer checked. 
because then you can just kind of deal them like cards and then just turn them off when you're not using them. Then maybe this is my fourth frame. And you can play around with what do you think tells the story best. I don't need to go quite as slow as my animation, but that's a good middle frame. Or maybe I do need to slow it down a little bit. So let's work backwards here. So I don't think that one's all that helpful. So I'm going to move this instead to the middle. And you're thinking beginning, middle, end. I'm going to move, actually, no, I'll leave that there. And then I'll turn this one on. And if I turn auto select off, I can deal from under the deck if I need to. Like that. And that kind of shows more chaotic movement of the plant eating the creature. All right, so that's the order I'm gonna choose for my nine frames. It tells the story in its own way. Creature moves in to the scene and then gets swallowed. I could change it a little bit. Maybe I don't like uh, this image starting it. Maybe I want that image to end it. And then I can move all of these just back one. So it is it really is like dealing cards. And then maybe I don't want this frame at all. Instead, I want see one like this this shows the creature beginning to come into frame maybe a little later yeah I think that works there's no reason to make your storyboard uh, your storyboard end with the same frame that it starts with. That's just wasting a frame. Right. So this kind of shows the menace a little bit of this plant eating this creature. So that's my final storyboard. Once I like that, I make sure that I only have nine frames showing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then just the white background because you don't want to have accidentally the edges of something. And then you can turn off your, your guides just by hitting command semicolon, and you can see the full layout. And it's like your film strip, you know, as a comic book. So now I save that, that's my refined storyboard, and then I want to save that as a JPEG. If you did a widescreen frame instead of a square, you want to make it 40 inches tall by 80 inches wide. That should give you plenty of space to grow from the middle and show your nine frames, even though they're a lot wider. But you'll still have one inch uh, between each animation frame. So now I say save as a copy, and I make it a JPEG, and it's gonna be the, the JPEG of my refined storyboard, and that is what goes up to Canvas. So you have three requirements, the rough storyboard sketch, even if you deviated from it like I did, the GIF animation, and then the refined storyboard. The animated story, the animated storyboard, which is called an animatic, um, is not required. It was a way of just introducing you to some of the animation tools. But if you want to post that, that's always, that's great. I'm fine with that. All right.
So let's post this JPEG. Remember, JPEG is an online format. 